After having GPUs being bottlenecked by the Z230 workstation and the i7-4770 equivalent Xeon, I switched to a Ryzen 5 3600 base system. And in this video, we'll become more familiar with the source of new and improved bottlenecks. There is very little to say about this CPU that you can't read on your own on the internet. 6 cores, 12 threads, 32MB of L3 cache and a single core boost frequency of 4.2GHz. This is something you can easily read from AMD's own website. The manufacturer labeled this CPU as a 65W TDP part and I'm sure that there are quite a few cases where it does use that amount of power or less. An all cores full load however has every piece of sensor reporting software coming back with 85 plus watts. But hey, I trust AMD instead of my lying guys. The cooler typically shipped with the CPU is the Wraith Stealth and according to AMD, this is fine for the amount of heat the chip generates. But my own experience is a bit more... odd. While I've seen similar coolers keeping other 65W TDP parts under 75 degrees, I found that I needed the much beefier Wraith Prism cooler to keep this obviously 65W part at a similar temperature. Try to get one of those if possible. In terms of tests, I opted to keep only the more competitive multiplayer titles, since those will usually require an FPS as high as possible. To avoid any GP bottleneck, these tests were done at lower resolutions, using the fastest card that I have. Which is not much, I mean, we're talking about the RX 580 here. I also added a video compression test towards the end of the video, that will allow us to gauge things like the benefits of SMT in terms of IPC. If you like crunching numbers, you love that piece and we'll gather more of this data on other CPUs as well. To complete the picture of our test setup, we'll be using 32GB of DDR4 in dual channel at 3000MHz CL16. The GPU used is primarily the RX580, but some of the FPS numbers were gathered with the R9290X as well. And speaking of numbers, the best I could get from Marvel Rivals was 165 FPS for the average and 133 for the 1% lows. I got these numbers in the tutorial at 720 resolution and 30% render scale. A better GPU will reach the same CPU limits but without dropping the visuals to Sega Genesis levels. But hey, I wanted to see where the test system starts to bottleneck the GPU and I believe I got my answer. Fortnite seems to cap out at about 230 FPS for the average and 130 41% lows, at least according to the data gathered when using the R9290X. This allows for a pretty good experience as long as the GPU that is used can keep up. The reload map provides a somewhat similar average FPS, also above 200, but the 1% lows are noticeably lower, barely making it close to 100. Overall though, I didn't feel that the CPU was holding back the experience. The Ryzen CPU hits an average FPS of 200 to 220 in CS2 at low settings. This is nothing new if you watch the R9290X video. The 1% lows and 0.1% lows above 100 FPS, and in some cases going above 160, makes for a much better experience than with the Haswell CPU used in the Z230. So if you're a CS2 enthusiast, the Ryzen 5 3600 is a pretty good choice. I dropped Delta Force. Just like Genshin Impact and ZZZ, this title decided to play games with me. Here's an update in the Epic Games Launcher. Done that? Great, here's another update in the Game Launcher. Done that? Great, here's another update, this time in game. <sighs> Not knowing when you can actually play the game makes it impossible to schedule any work, and I don't have time for this shit. At 1280x720 and low settings, Apex Legends ran an average of 238 FPS. It reached in more than one occasion the 300 FPS hardcap that the engine has. The 1% low stayed well above 150, that is 90 more than what I need with my monitor and skill level. Now, I don't know if this is as fast as the CPU goes. Having the ability to reduce the resolution more would have helped. Overwatch 2 does have that easily accessible though. At 720 resolution and 50% render scale, the system spent most of its time in the training map glued to the 600 FPS frame rate cap. The 1% lows is well over 400 FPS, so it won't be the CPU that will get you in trouble when playing this game. Dropping the resolution to 1280x720 didn't get much back in terms of FPS in the finals. This means that I was probably hitting a bottleneck, but even CPU limited, the performance was quite ok with an FPS of just above 120 for the average and anywhere in the mid to high 80s for the 1% lows. I cannot fold the hardware for my poor performance, I just didn't get enough time to play more of this. 
It's very likely we hit a CPU limit in Rainbow Six Siege. Reducing the rendering scale from 100% to 50% at 720 resolution increased the FPS by only 50 for the average. So it looks like the Ryzen chip can do at most 326 FPS for the average and 241 41% lows. As far as casual players like me are concerned, this processor will run this game just fine. In terms of productivity, I opted for a video compression test. I timed how long it takes to go through the last steps of rendering one of my earlier videos, and the Ryzen 5 3600 managed to pull it off in around 10 minutes. This time is a good enough metric to judge the performance of a CPU, if all you care about is the real world performance, everything else be damned. However, if you want to be able to gauge IPC improvements, we need to get the number of clock cycles for this rendering run. And for that, we need to peel off two layers from the performance onion, the number of cores and the frequency they operate at. We can derive the single core performance by simply multiplying those 607 seconds to the number of cores. That would then get us a time of around an hour for a single core to finish the same task. To get the number of clock cycles needed to complete the work, well, we divide the time needed to complete the rendering to the clock period of the CPU. And if division is not your thing, then multiply the same amount of time to the average CPU frequency, as it was recording during the test. And since the result is the number of clock cycles needed to complete a work consisted of a more or less fixed number of instructions, it can be used to gauge IPC improvements. For example, running the same test with simultaneous multi-threading off gets us a total completion time of around 13.5 minutes, which is about an hour and 20 minutes for a single core to do the same job. Multiplying that with the average frequency during the test, a bit higher this time at 4.1 GHz, we get about 20 trillion clock cycles. Compared to the result with SMT on, this time shows that SMT alone brings an uplift of 26% in IPC, for only 18% more power, from around 73 watts with SMT off to 86 watts with it turned on. Cache size is another factor, and CPUs with the same architecture but different cache size should make that more obvious when comparing them using the numbers of clock cycles. Just as obvious that I cannot provide that insight, I have only one Zen 2 CPU. My only issue when it comes to the Ryzen 5 3600 is not related to the part itself, but rather with how AMD marketed it as a 65 watts part. There was no need for that, I would have bought the part even when labeled as an 85 watt CPU. One of my concerns is related to how most of the budget motherboards got designed and built, probably fine for a true 65 watts part, and maybe too close to their limits for an 85 watts one. This would also explain why the Ryzen 5 3600 got labeled as a hot CPU. Cooler manufacturers know how to make a cooler for a 65 watts part, and it's not really their fault for bundling such a cooler with a chip that has a TDP a smidge higher than said 65 watts. I like the performance of this chip, and it is definitely capable of running the games better than I'm capable of playing. As for price, while 40 to 50 USD is the more common price, I've seen instances where it dropped well below that. We'll definitely try to get more CPU performance data measured in clock cycles. This would make it easier to gauge performance gains stemming from architectural improvements. Stay tuned. As for this one, well, we're done. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it, and I'll see you for the next one. And that's a wrap.